Can you see my screen? Yes, I can see a screen. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, uh, as I said earlier, we will discuss uh, DApps using Algorand blockchain. And just to give you the overview of what we'll be discussing, uh, we will see on on the 2000 feet level definition of blockchain, Algorand blockchain, and we'll try to define DApps and its components. And I will share you some resources and we'll go to uh, a demo. So uh, the usual question, what is a blockchain, right? So blockchain is uh, simply a method of storing list of entries, uh, each entry being a record. Uh, so simply saying it's a method of storing records uh, together. And as you can see, uh, this uh, blue, blue thing, the blue square thing is supposed to be a record. And blockchain is all about storing those uh, record is securely and safely okay so it cannot be changed once uh, a record is created it cannot be changed easily uh, why is that we will see that in a minute so let's let's, let's discuss uh, how it works and then we'll answer that question so this blue thing is uh, a record and we'll have a bundle of records say we have uh, nine or nine records and this a bundle of records are called uh, blocks and uh, to make a blockchain we we'll need a lot of blocks right so uh, we have to put blocks together to create uh, a blockchain and here we have uh, a list of blocks and each block is connected to each other with uh, a hash uh, this red line is supposed to represent the hash and uh, a matching hash will make up the chain on his name uh, blockchain so to make the whole chain the hash between blocks should match say for example we have here three blocks uh, namely we can say block a b and c and the real lines are as we discussed they are hash so the hash of block a should match to uh, a data stored in block b uh, that's called a uh, previous block hash. So block A will have its own hash and block B will have its own hash and will store its previous hash. So the previous hash and blocks, block A's hash should match to make up the chain, right? So uh, altering one record in the block, say we have changed uh, a record in block A, so that will change the hash of the entire block. So to match it to the next block, we'll need to alter block B as well. And changing block B will change uh, the hash of block B, which will break the chain between block B and C. So this will go and go like that. And uh, changing one record will require us to change the whole blockchain. So that's why uh, it's really hard to change uh, a record or a data once it's created. And this whole mechanism is called, uh, as you might have guessed, it's, it's called the blockchain. And let's go to the Algorand blockchain. So Algorand is uh, one type of blockchain. And it's a proof of stake blockchain protocol. It uses proof of stake blockchain protocol. Uh, there are two types of uh, blockchain protocols. Uh, well, the first one is uh, proof of work and the second one is proof of stake. Proof of work is actually an older version. So uh, most blockchains are leaving it behind. For example, Ethereum, is, Ethereum used to apply proof of work and now it's changing to proof of stake. So proof of stake is a type of protocol uh, that allows nodes place or deposit a stake to the blockchain. It can be uh, ten dollar or hundred. It, it it can be also a thousand dollar, and each node is selected accordingly. So there is a direct or uh, a linear relationship between the deposit and the probability of being selected. So if I deposit a high amount of stake in the blockchain, uh, my probability of being selected to perform a hash uh, to validate a transaction is also high. So 
that's uh, how proof of stake works and the second one is proof of work and in proof of work uh, this protocol allow nodes or uh, computers to compete with each other to hash or to validate uh, transactions quickly and the fastest will get rewarded that's how proof of work uh, works so in return in those protocols either it's proof of stake or it's proof of work once the nodes complete the transaction or complete validating the transactions, the fee associated with each transaction will be rewarded to that node. And lastly, uh, Algorand's blockchain will use uh, a native cryptocurrency called Algo. Okay, uh, that's just a few points about Algorand blockchain. Let's dive into uh, decentralized apps. So the main point of today's uh, tutorial right so decentralized apps uh, it's a new version of uh, application so it's a cutting edge technology you might say so let's compare it with uh, conventional uh, web to applications and uh, decentralized apps so first of all uh, dApps or decentralized apps are all connected to the blockchain and this conventional, uh, the previous or web apps, uh, the, the conventional web applications will have uh, a front end typically written in uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And there is uh, a back end code which defines the logic. And finally, uh, there is a place to store all the essential data, uh, required data, and that requires a database. <coughs> Sorry. So if you compare the two, uh, a fully decentralized uh, application will have the last two steps, uh, the backend and the database in the blockchain. So uh, the backend, the logic and uh, the database will be completed on the blockchain, meaning uh, backend code or logic will be executed by smart contracts and uh, data are stored in the blockchain ledger uh, using uh, states or, yeah using states and uh, the beauty about the blockchain is anyone can see uh, your logic and validate uh, the miners can validate your transaction but to read data from the blockchain anyone can do that so and data is not stored in one place rather it's distributed so uh, how do we connect to the blockchain uh, there are two options actually uh, first <coughs> you can create your own node uh, i think that's uh, a tough one because most people do not prefer that they prefer to connect to nodes provided by third party services uh, for example infura or alchemy and pure stake uh, and a node we are connected to uh, blockchain are called uh, providers so once we are connected to the blockchain through the providers we can read data from the blockchain but uh, if you want to write data to the blockchain or create uh, a certain transaction on the blockchain, we need to sign a transaction using our uh, cryptocurrency, crypto wallet's uh, private key. Uh, we, there are a number of uh, wallets you can find in the internet. We'll discuss uh, two of them in the next slide. And the next point about uh, decentralized application is uh, they use uh, P2P architecture or peer-to-peer -peer architecture, meaning uh, there is no centralized device or server to run the application. Uh, each each node is uh, equal. Each node has uh, equal authority with another node, so that's why we call it peer-to-peer uh, -peer architecture and. Uh, the very good example of peer-to-peer -peer architecture uh, in our world might be uh, Torrent. So in Torrent, if you have noticed, uh, you you'll find an enormous amount of data in the Torrent, right? Uh, you can you can find movies, uh, applications, uh, some other software, uh, some other data, and uh, you don't think that data is stored in one huge uh, centralized server, right? This all data are distributed among each clients of Torrent and I any data that's stored in my computer if I 
allowed it to. Okay, so uh, I've mentioned wallets in the previous slides. Uh, actually, you'll have, uh, I think you'll have a further discussion on wallets in the coming tutorials, but uh, most likely you'll use uh, my algo connect or algo signer for the Algorand blockchain. And I will demo, I will demo the project using uh, my algo connect wallet. So we'll see that. So just to give you some uh, resources, uh, the first one is uh, a step-by-step -step guide how you can create an NFT using uh, JavaScript or Python. And I also put a detailed explanation on how you can use uh, Python or JSSDK to work with the basic ACI Algorand standard assets. That's uh, create, transfer, freeze, opt-in, and so something like that. And you can also find how you can use uh, IPFS, uh, that's a distributed file system uh, using Pinata's API. And finally, you will find a GitHub repository that will serve you as a starter code uh, to show you, just to show you how you can integrate uh, MyAlgo wallet with React frontend. Okay, having said that, uh, let's jump into uh, the demonstration uh, session. But before that, uh, uh, just to give you the idea of this project, uh, this project was supposed to make uh, use of NFT technology by blockchain and uh, Web3 and uh, make certificate generation, distribution and value transfer or asset transfer, the asset being the certificate with, within the Algorand blockchain. Okay, so to make uh, this project, uh, I've, made, I've made use of uh, the following tech stacks. As a backend, I used a Python backend, which is a fast API, but this should be replaced by smart contracts as we have discussed earlier to make it uh, fully decentralized, okay? And uh, there is a JavaScript algo SDK and uh, my algo connect to Alex for making transactions and paying gas fees for the transactions. And those fees are uh, the reward for either the miners or the validators we have mentioned earlier. And uh, there is also Pinata uh, distributed file system to store the assets or certificates and the pure stake API. Uh, you can you can create your own uh, environment, but using pure stake API is uh, I think it's relatively easy than uh, you know creating your own environment and testing it there. And as a front end, uh, we we'll use React and for storing data, I will use uh, MySQL database, and this uh, this should be replaced by state variables uh, to make it fully decentralized. Okay, so just simple structure of uh, the project is look like this. First, there are two parties involved here. There is a school or a trainer, and there is a, tra a trainee. So the school and uh, Training need to have a wallet account uh, to log into the system. Then uh, a trainer or a school can create an asset to a trainee, and the trainee would then make an opt in transaction by requesting transfer. An opt in transaction is a special type of transaction in this algorithm protein that's called uh, zero transaction. We're just requesting uh, an asset transfer. We're not making anything, but rather uh, requesting a transfer. In uh, Algorand blockchain, you cannot just send an asset to anybody, uh, whoever you want. Uh, the receiver should first uh, create uh, an asset transfer request to you, to your account. So, and finally, uh, the trainer can make uh, the transfer. So, I'm gonna stop the screen sharing and show you the show you how it works. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> as I have said earlier, we will make use of a uh, few uh, code snippets from the documentation I have shared to you earlier. Uh, the first one is a create assets, uh, opt-in, and transfer. These are the 
main tasks we will be doing in our project. Okay, if you look inside these codes, there is a lot uh, similar parts in these codes. Let me just expand all and. Okay, first uh, we connect to uh, PureStake API to connect to the Algorand blockchain, and you'll you'll get uh, an API key uh, once you sign in in the PureStake API. So using that, we can create an asset. While creating an asset, uh, if you notice, this this function is uh, creating an asset, and these are the attributes to create the assets. It, you can find it on the Algorand's uh, documentation and resources. I will share that to Anastasia and you can find it there. And all functions are uh, put clearly in the documentation. You just have to make uh, a few tweaks to, you know, customize it for your, your own application. It's really uh, easy if you follow the documentation. So uh, let's run it and see how it goes. Okay, uh, the folder structure, uh, this is, uh, here we have the API, the first API, and the React is, uh, the front end is stored in this uh, directory. So first, let's start the API by cd to API, then So in fast API, this command line will uh, fire the server. You will call. This will fire the server uh, on port uh, 8000. Yes, on port 8000. And they start uh, the React application. So uh, before running your uh, application, since you need a uh, gas fee or since you have to make some transaction using the gas fee, uh, make sure you have uh, algo algos in your Algorand account. Uh, you can use a dispenser to charge your algo. And this, this is the front end. It's just a layout a template I use to represent the front end. So as I've said earlier, we have two accounts here. Uh, the first one is a trainee and the trainer, a trainer being the school or the organization. So let's log in as a trainer from here. And this is my Algo Connect wallet. Uh, I'll put my credentials and now I'm, I'm seeing the dashboard of uh, trainers. So these are the two trainees I have in my database that should be converted to, you know, uh, stored in the blockchain ledgers. And let's just sign in as a trainee from the Microsoft page. And so here, uh, there are no certificates listed for the time being because uh, I haven't created any certificate for any training. So let's, this this training is just a sample, and this one is the real training, uh, training ABC. So if I create uh, an asset for a training ABC, since I'm making a transaction, I will have to you know log in with uh, the my wallet so we can review the transaction uh, as a reason is creation and from my account uh, to I, ha I have not stated two yet because I'm just configuring the assets so the asset unit is uh, cert and the total supply is one meaning it's uh, an NFT so either I have it or uh, I don't have it it's one or zero 
So this will be uh, the URL where, where uh, I will deploy or I will upload the assets. And this is the metadata of the assets. So, <clears throat> and I will have to pay 0.001 algos to make this transaction. So the lucky node will get paid 0.001 algos. Well, let's just enter a credential and it will it, it will take some time and once it's completed creating the assets it will reload the page ah, so as you can see here it's waiting for an opt-in because uh, without an opt-in we cannot transfer any asset to anybody in the algorithm blockchain right so the status is created and we are waiting for an opt-in but uh, here, still, I don't see my uh, asset prepared. So, I by now, I think I should receive an email. Yeah. Uh, this is just a dedicated email address I created for uh, this demonstration. And uh, you, I'll get an email address from... Uh, the dedicated server for the time being it's just uh, a personal email address so stating that the asset id is uh, the asset is prepared and i can make an opt-in transaction using the, the following asset id so using that asset id i can request a transfer here so requesting a transfer is also a transaction even if it's a zero transaction uh, it's it should be registered on the blockchain so uh, these are the details of the transaction. The asset ID is, uh, as I've entered here, it's same from my own account to my own account with the amount of zero. That's why we call it a zero transaction. And we can see this actually. To make an opt-in transaction, and once the transaction is completed, it will reload the page again. So here, with this asset ID is uh, requested, and I'm waiting for an approval to own uh, the asset. OK, so here, from the trainers or the school's dashboard, I should be able to, yeah, uh, I have an approve uh, option or a decline option to complete the transaction of transferring assets. So I can approve it to send the ownership to the trainee and I can also decline the request. So let's just approve it and... Okay, now the amount becomes one and from the trainer's account is going to the trainee's account, right? So I'm transferring the asset completely. It was, the amount was one. I'm transferring all of the one amount. So it will, it will be a complete ownership after I make the transaction. Okay, so the status is transferred now. I should be able to see my asset here. If I just reload the page, yes, I status is transferred and I have full ownership for this asset. And uh, this is the asset as uh, just a dummy certificate. And this is stored in uh, IPFS, that's a distributed file system. And if I change, if someone changed this file, uh, here you can see uh, the hash of the file this will change as well so it's, it's it, it is very difficult to you know uh, forge some files and uh, mimic some ownerships so that's a beauty of it and uh, this is all about the transfer and let's just see some transactions made in the algo explorer okay okay this one is uh a transfer, config transfer. This one is a school's account or the trainer's account. If he, these all are the transaction I have made to test the application. So first I make a config with an asset ID of 
this and the name of class it is training certificate and unit is cert and reason is creation and we can see details about us it I think. <laughs> Yes, uh, the ID is uh, placed here and the URL, I can see the URL. Uh, all informations you can find about the asset are uh, displayed here. So, And same is true for the trainees part. Uh, I first make an opt-in transaction with uh, uh, an opt-in transaction of this asset ID and the name is trainee certificate and then I make a transfer of that uh, asset to my own account. So uh, this is all. Uh, thank you very much for. Uh, thank you, thank you, Nathaniel, for that uh, very precise presentation. I don't know if you have any questions, especially for those who are seeing this. For the first time, is there something that you saw there that you didn't uh, understand and you'd like more clarification? Time for questions. Maybe just to throw a question back to you guys, if, uh, maybe if you're thinking about your questions. Uh, have you understood what a decentralized application is? How how maybe it's uh, developed and how it's linked to a blockchain? Can we answer those uh, few questions well, on uh, in relation to a decentralized application? Uh, okay, maybe I can put some brain teaser uh, for you to get started. Uh, is that okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. Just go ahead. Maybe we get them engaged before we end the session. Okay, so uh, on the slides, uh, we have mentioned that uh, Torrent is uh, a peer to peer architecture. Uh, Torrent follows a peer to peer ar architecture, right? So, do you think that's uh, a blockchain? Just think it for yourself, and um, while exploring that, mm -hmm. uh, you might have uh, get a lot more information about blockchain and peer to peer mm -hmm. the difference. So, just explore about how why torrent is not a blockchain application and what makes it a little bit similar with uh, decentralized app or blockchain applications. Note on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for that. So, again, give it another minute or two if there are any questions. Otherwise, I think you can just stop the recording and edit there, then give you a chance to maybe take the same approach, or if you've had a different idea on how you can do your digital application, you go ahead and start. So if there are any questions, you can just post them on the chats or on the Slack channel. You can keep the conversation going on the Slack channel. Otherwise, in a minute or two, you can just stop the recording and uh, end the tutorial there. Yes, Brian. Um, I'd like to know um, for the logins in the, in the front end, like, um, where 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 are they coming from? Um, is it from from the blockchain itself? Like I I don't understand. You I, I saw you had a username and a password. Like where are they coming from? Okay. Uh, first, you, you need to create a wallet account. So for some reasons, it, the wave is not working for me. I will I. I love to show you how you create a wallet account. You just go to my algo connect. You just Google my algo connect and create my algo wallet account from there. 
Are you sharing a screen that night? Maybe it seems like you are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming you know, you have the idea of how you can create uh, an algo account, right? By far, you should have created an algo account. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, so using your uh, algo account, you can create uh, a wallet account. Is there a new wallet account or using your previous algo account? Yeah. So, uh, Let's see. Yeah, for some reason it's stuck on the loading. I don't know why, but you just go to uh, wallet dot dot com and let me show you. You can create uh, a wallet account from here and. Uh, the starter code, the GitHub starter code, will lead you through how the login process works. I, I just took that module and put it in uh, my uh, front end application. So it's just, I think it's called a rich, rich library or something like that. Yeah. Uh, you just take uh, the module and put it in your front end, and you can create uh, my algo connect wallet account from the internet and you should be good to go i think that that's not really a difficult part actually yeah um, stuck on loading i don't know why. okay uh, okay uh uh, but before that, uh, did I answer that, uh, Brian? Um, yeah, I think you did. Um... Yeah, I, I know it. Uh, I, I'm not being helpful too much, but uh, it's just a module I used from the GitHub repository. So it's all prepared, and you just have to put that module in your code. Uh, you don't have to tweak anything, so you just need to use uh, that rich library in your uh, front-end application and create uh, a wallet account. You can either uh, create uh, my algo connect wallet or algo signer. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, and about uh, the distributed file system, so I'm good. As the name indicates, it's the file is distributed. Uh, IPFS means, I think, uh, interplanetary file system. So uh, the file is not stored in uh, one location. So say it's not on your PC. It's stored in uh, a bunch of computers or a bunch of uh, memories, uh, hard drives. So uh, I used, uh, there is called Pinata. Let me just. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yes, uh, this is called Pinata, and uh, you can access uh, distributed file systems using uh, Pinata API. Uh, and the pin, when uh, setting up the Pinata API, you will have uh, API key and uh, a secret key. You should use that to store files. Once you have the API key and the secret key, it's just uh, a matter of calling endpoints from the Pinata API. So you call uh, a certain endpoint to upload uh, a file to your Pinata, uh, the distributed file system, and you can also see the distributed file system using the URL returned. So uh, when uploading a file to the distributed file system, I think 
the file will be shredded into some parts and each each shred will, will be stored in a distributed system or a separate uh, memory so if that answers the question <laughs> Hello. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, do we have any other question for Natnail? I see we still have 12 minutes on our time. Any other question or that does those to make a little things a little bit clearer? Okay, if there are no more questions, I think we can just uh, stop. I hope it's okay if we stop the recording. Maybe if you feel like you're okay, you can just maybe respond instead of being quiet. Say yes, it's good. We are good to go. And then you can just stop the recording and um, end the session there. So what's the feeling from the group? Are we okay? Good to proceed. All right, left. I'm assuming that's also a good. Guy says good to go. Generals this morning, Brian. Are we good to go? Okay. So, generals, are we also good to go? Great. So, I'll just stop the recording there. And when the recording is ready, we'll just share the recording again so that you can go through it. And um, yeah, thanks for our time for showing up, beggars. Thank you. Bye.